This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, hello there, hello there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond. Welcome you to another Sports Catastrophe on this day. And on this day, September 22nd, 1966, the New York Yankees were playing a baseball game. Sorry, I completely forgot my research here. And basically, the White Sox beat the Yankees 4-1. to one. Yankees end up being 20 games below 500. There was a time that the Yankees were 20 games below 500, at least at one point during a season, which was unusual because, you know, it's the New York freaking Yankees. So anyway, the 1966 Yankees were not that good. After making the World Series in 1964, they seemed to dis integrate. So for this game, which was actually rescheduled from Tuesday because of a rain out, the attendance was porous. How porous? I'll tell you later. But anyway, the White Sox starting lineup was Ed Stroud in right, Don Buford at third, Tommy Agee at center, Bill Scruton at first, Twain Josephson catching, Ken Berry at left, Jerry Adair at short, Al Rett Weiss at second, future bat, and Joe Horland on the mound. <clears throat> Yankees had Horace Clark at second, Bobby Mercer at short, weird, Tom Trash in left, Joe Pepitone at first, Roger Maris in right field, yeah, they still have Maris, Steve Whitaker at center, Billy Bryant catching, Cleet Boyer at third, and Stan Boston pitching. It was actually a nip and tuck affair till the fifth when Jerry Adair hit an RBI double to score Josephson. I'm racing about Tommy Agee up Boston to score Don Buford made it 2-0. Then Tommy Agee hit an inside the park home run off of Dooley Womack. You could tell the Yankees were really that bad when a guy named Dooley Womack was pitching. Worst of all, Tommy McCraw came in and hit a home run to deep right field and over the porch and the White Sox were up 4 nothing. Bobby Mercer did get an RBI single to make it 4-1, but that was it. And the Yankees lost, dropping them to 66 and 87, which was unusual, especially in the day and age that the Yankees were that bad. However, the 66 Yankees, they finished at 70 and 89, so they only played 159 games. Three games were washed out because of rain. Johnny Keane, the guy that the Yankees swiped from St. Louis, who won the 1964 World Series as a Cardinal, actually didn't last that long. He lasted 20 games only in the 66 season and only won four. So Ralph Hoke had to come in and save the day, or so he thought. So anyhow, yeah, they had Elston Howard, Joe Pepitone, Bobby Richardson, Horace Clark, Cleet Boyer, Roy White, Mickey Mantle, and Roger Maris as the starting lineup, the starting nine, starting eight. It's like, how could the Yankees suck with these guys? Like, Elston Howard was good. Joe Pepitone was a home runs machine. Bobby Richardson was still around. Mickey Mantle was still around, and so was Roger Maris. To add, Bobby Mercer only played 21 games, but he was 20 years old and a shortstop. Tom Tresh was around. Roger Raples. Yeah. The pitching staff of Mel Stonemeyer Sr., Fritz Peterson, Al Dowling, who would be famous for giving up Hank Aaron's 715th gopher ball, Fred Talbot, and Jim Booten. Yeah, Jim Booten, the guy who wrote Ball Four and that book. And basically lifted the lid on baseball scandal. Yeah, but Mel Stoudemire Sr. had 20 losses, which is like unbelievable. Steve Hamilton, the volley floater, was around. Whitey Ford was 37, but he was put in a relief role. He was getting up there in age. Bob Friend, Stan Boston. So yeah, the Yankees, that team just did not have anything good going on with them. It was a awful day on September 22nd, 1966. So, and the Yankees were sputtering and all that. Yeah.
Yeah, so, anyway, yeah, it was huge with the rain and all of that. So anyway, how many fans were at that game? Well, 413 fans. That's right, only 413 fans. Even Oakland fans, even Oakland crowds are outpacing them. Like, even in, Oak, even in Oakland, yeah, even in Oakland, um, crowd would do, be much better. Of course, it was raining and all that, so you can't blame them and all that. So anyway, Red Barber, who was um, doing Yankee broadcast, which is kind of weird because Barber, I thought, was always a Dodgers guy. But I guess after the Dodgers decided to go for Finn Scully, Red Barber didn't want to stay. And he decides to switch to the Yankees. So Barber on TV was doing the game on TV for W Picks 11 and said that the empty stadium was a story and asked that the cameras pan the empty park. It wasn't allowed, but Rick actually, but Red Barber talked about it anyhow, saying, I don't know what the pay attendance is today, but whatever it is, it's the smallest crowd in the history of Yankee Stadium. And this crowd is the story, not the game. I mean, he had a point. Saying all that. Anyway, there were problems that Barbara was not going to stay around. So, anyway, Red Barber was canned by the Yankees. Barber said he was fired for maintaining his journalistic integrity when the stadium was empty. So anyway, everyone liked Red Barber and all that, being the Dodgers' first announcer when radio was around in 1939. Barber had Scully under his wing. But Red Barber left because Walter O'Malley took over the squad and he wasn't too happy about it. The Yankees would hire him to team up with Mel Allen. And they actually may have gone along quite well, in a sense. Anyway. Mel... Mal Allen was gone by 1964. He was dropped after the Yankees lost to the World Series. It was shocking. And Barber was the main guy and all that. So anyway, Barber would have Jerry Coleman and Phil Rasuto in the booth with him. So anyway, there was a lot of friction and all that. So anyway. No, that's just shocking and all that. Of course, the picture you see, if you're watching this, instead of listening to it, is of the bleacher creatures and how full Yankee Stadium would be. But it's just a poltergeist to what is what happened that day, September 22nd, 1966, and how the mighty Yankees would fall. Mando would stay around for a few more years. Maris would actually go to St. Louis and win a World Series title as a member of the Cardinals in 1967. And the Yankees slowly but surely jumped up, but only because of George Steinbrenner buying the team in 1973 and making the Yankees more presentable. So yeah, it's scary. 400 fans and all that. That's low attendance. Not even the worst Blue Jays crowd has hit that. And as I said, not even the Oakland A's stuff, even though that they might be moving to Vegas in about three years. They're more advanced. They get like eight, 9,000 fans. It's just shocking how 400 fans came in. Yes, it was raining and all that. Yes, it was a terrible rainstorm. But still, they could have tried better. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.